Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this week's Mental Monday. start another little mini series in the mental Mondays. I want to talk about criminal psychology or forensic psychology. So that's basically the study of criminal psychology and applying it to different cases or crimes that are committed to try to catch the criminal. This is something that you guys know I am super super into. I I'm obsessed with criminal minds. I'm obsessed with forensic psychology. I love all of that stuff. That's why I'm getting my degree I'm getting. And that is exactly why I am getting a master's degree in behavioral analysis because that is directly connected to it. So what I want to start off the series talking about is profiling. If you have never watched Criminal Minds, basically the whole goal is to create a profile. A profile of what the person that committed that crime or those series of crimes would look like. What the different aspects of that person are that they can pull from the scene they leave, the victims they go after, the type of crimes they commit and how they commit them to create this idea of what that person might be like, what they might try next, how they might escalate, where they might go next, and try to use that profile that's created to catch them, to head their plan off and be able to be a step ahead enough to stop them at their next attempt. Criminal Minds is all about the FBI profilers, and that is their whole job. When there's a serial criminal, whether it's a serial rapist, a serial killer, serial arsonist, any of that, serial any of that, they are, they work with local police departments throughout the country. They even do go abroad sometimes, and they build the profiles to help those police departments try to catch the person that is committing those crimes in their area. So, a profile is extremely key to catching those big criminals like Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, um, all, all of those ones that you, you hear about in the news. The serial criminals that you hear about all the time, the FBI has a profile of them. Most of the time, the FBI was called in to make a profile and that profile helped catch whoever that criminal is. They did Son of Sam, they did the Zodiac Killer, they, they've done so many huge cases that they were pivotal in catching that person. And it doesn't have to be somebody that's doing it in one area, it can be somebody that's traveling throughout the country doing it. It's insane the amount of range what they do has from case to case. Profiling is the art of being able to read a crime scene, read victimology, read past history in somebody, and tell whether or not they were the person that committed that crime, and beyond that, what they would try to do next. So they look at things in the crime scene, like something ritualistic, something something very personal to the person that committed the crime, that's a personal touch to it, and that can tell a lot about who did it. If their victims all have the same general characteristics, if they're all brunette with brown eyes, if they're all blonde with blue eyes, if they're all short, if they're all tall, victimology can be a huge part of a profile because that is who they're targeting. So that can lead to part of their motivation for doing it. If they are targeting a specific look in a woman, say, that tells you a lot about what they might be experiencing and that can help you get more of a warning out to possible victims. And that can tell you who would be a possible victim, unless they totally break pattern, which has happened before, obviously. But victimology can be a huge part of it. Rituals can be 
a little touchy because they can be something super obvious or they can be something super subtle. And the type of ritual can tell you if it was a sadistic killer, if it was a psychopath, if it was any of those kind of personality things usually come out in rituals. And what I mean by ritual is something that isn't required for committing the crime. So physically committing the criminal act does not require it. That's a personal touch that person is putting on it and that tells you a lot. So that's almost a signature to the crime they're putting if it's something they always do and something that obviously means enough to them to go beyond what's required of them to do it. It might even be the culmination of the crime for them. It might be what gives them that adrenaline rush when they finish it. So it can look a whole lot of different ways. It can look like take you a souvenir. It can look like doing certain things. It can look like committing the crime in a certain way. Um, maybe even that's a little riskier. There are so many different details to how a crime is committed that tells you the mentality of the person that committed it. And I, I know it can sound super complicated or detailed or maybe a little far-fetched to be able to read a crime scene that well and be able to pinpoint things like age or gender, but there are legitimate details that you can build such a useful profile from just by looking at where they killed and seeing the details of the crime scene and who they killed. And in a sense, the FBI gets more information by the time they're involved because usually they don't come until it's a serial crime. So I'm not actually sure what defines a serial killer, like what the spree has to be for it to be a serial crime or a serial killer, but I would guess it's more than two, maybe. Um, and over a span of time, we're not talking spree killers or we're not talking mass killers that are like just killing everybody in one vicinity in one instance. In multiple instances over a series of time, I'll put the details on the screen because I don't actually know them. I don't know why I don't know them, but I just can't think of that right now. So we'll put that on the screen so you know what that detail is. They get called in at that point. That is when a local police department can call the FBI and say, we don't know how to get ahead of this guy, can you come help? And that's when they come and they build the profile. So they've seen two or three of the criminal's victims. They've seen two or three of the people the serial killer killed, or two or three of the fires a serial arsonist set, or two or three of the victims that the serial rapist attacked. And so they, they start with more information to be able to stop them. But giving all of that history, just adds to the profile and it is such a I want to say cool thing that might be really super morbid of me. I find it really really intriguing and really interesting and I love it. That's why I want to do this series. That's why I'm studying what I'm studying. That is profiling. That is what FBI profilers do. That is what even on a smaller scale police do when they go to a crime scene. They're taking down details, they're collecting evidence. Even if they're not creating a profile, they're looking at those things and still taking information from it. So they're not formally creating a profile of the criminal, but they are looking at those same details that the FBI does. And even on that smaller scale, they're trying to create what might have happened and who might have done it. So they're using the evidence that that's there in front of them to determine what actually occurred and who would be most likely to fit with that physical evidence and those details to have committed the crime. That's profiling. That's kind of an introduction and a little mini lesson on what profiling is. I love watching that happen. I love watching Criminal Minds and watching them profile. I also love listening to Real Crime Profile podcast. If you never checked that out and you like crime shows and you're super into that kind of thing, definitely check it out because one of the main hosts on Real Crime Profile is an ex-FBI profiler. He was in the Behavioral Analysis Unit. He writes for Criminal Minds and is an executive producer. He is so cool to listen to 
talk about cases and he has this whole career doing it that is so interesting to listen to details about too. So if you are interested in that, go check out their podcast. It's really, really cool and teaches you a ton. I have learned so much about profiling through listening to their podcast. It's amazing. So I want to do this mini series. I think it's going to be super fun. If there's any specific areas of forensic psychology you would like to hear about, I would love to see that in the comments below and I can get some ideas rolling for videos and have some fun topics to do. So I hope you guys are excited for this mini series. I think it's going to be so much fun. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, click the screen and subscribe and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>